Hello, everyone. Happy uh, Sunday, is that something people say? Come on, find a seat. I think there's some open ones there. <laughs> that was a joke, too. All right. I brought my best jokes because it's the last day. Um, the next talk is... Um, oh, I'm doing that thing where I look at the wall. <laughs> it's on the Guardian uh, RFID security privacy thing, which I know nothing about. But fortunately, Serge Kaiser does, and he's going to enlighten you. So uh, sit down, enjoy your ice cream, and I pass you to Serge. Well, uh, hello everybody. Thanks for uh, showing up and uh, attending this talk. Today I uh, tell you something about uh, RFID Guardian. It's a project uh, to make some uh, RFID security tool. Uh, first, uh, I will explain something about RFID. I think that most people here in the room, uh, they will know what RFID is, but just to be sure that you know, I'll give a short introduction. Then I will tell you who the people are behind RFID Guardian. And then um, I will talk about the, the why we created the RFID Guardian. And furthermore, I will also introduce our new version of the RFID Guardian, which should be available in a few months' time. So first of all, what is RFID? Um, I think Vista is crashing now. Well, never mind. Uh, an RFID system always consists of a, a tag, which you can see on the, on the left side, and a reader, which you can see on the right side, and also a computer. Um, the, the tags are cards like the, the, the bank cards you have, and um, you can wirelessly uh, read those cards, and you can store information in, in, in those cards. The very first uh, use of RFID, actually, was in the, in the Second World War, where RFID was used to um, for fighter planes to distinguish uh, on the radar uh, between friend or enemy. Uh, nowadays, uh, the, the RFID is a little bit more sophisticated than then, and we inc include microchips onto such a tag. Um, these tags can be used in stores to tag products, and you can um, uh, use them as a replacement for barcodes although these are far more sophisticated than barcodes. Um, yeah, they, they add a lot of value to, to your products. Um, so we created this RFID Guardian, and we are people from the Free University in Amsterdam and the Technical University in Delft. The Free University in Amsterdam provides the software. The Technical University in Delft, uh, where I am from, uh, creates the, the hardware. Um, we have a lot of volunteer students, um, people who do their internships or who do a, a bachelor project or a master project. Uh, however, for the, the, the people who keep the whole development running are uh, these three people over here. Uh, first, we have a project co coordinator. She did her PhD project on this, uh, this RFID Guardian. Then we have someone who is in charge of the software and myself, I'm in charge of the hardware. So we created this RFID Guardian, but what are really the, the, the things why we wanted to create it? Um, in RFID, you have a lot of security problems. Uh, first of all, it's a very new technology, so people don't, well, when um, they started to uh, create these RFID tags a few years back, they didn't really know what uh, we can do with it. So we also didn't know what the threats are. We thought about it, and these are a few things that can go wrong with, uh, with your tags. First of all, um, unauthorized read tag reading is, is really a threat because you can read your tags wirelessly. So if I have, a, if I've, if I have my wallet full of tags, um, somebody who is two meters away from me can still read all my tags, and I might not know that. So. Perhaps they can read my bank card and they can see what the balance is on my uh, bank account. And of course, I don't want that if I never gave any uh, authorization for that. Um, furthermore, when I use my cards to, to pay or to, to register my books at the library, um, other people can eavesdrop on the, on the wireless communication between my, uh, 
my cards and uh, the computer from the library or the computer from, uh, from the supermarket. Uh, this eavesdropping, you can use the information which is sent to, well, to do bad things. Um, you can most probably uh, come up with them yourself. Uh, furthermore, you can also track people. If I make a profile of all the cards which are in my wallet, then I can walk through a city and if there are enough readers, people can read my wallet and they can see, okay, this guy has a banker card from ABN Ambro and a, a customer card from a supermarket and, and this card and that card. So it must uh, be this person. So they can track me while I'm walking through the city and I wouldn't want that. Um, furthermore, you can clone a tag. So somebody can clone my bank card, uh, bank card and they can use this bank card as um, to pay and yeah, then they pay with my money and of course again we don't want that. And uh, when we uh, have a system with a, a, a reader and a lot of tags and we can create a huge amount of tags then we can completely uh, uh, pull down the whole um, RFID system from the supermarket or from the library and that's actually a, a denial of service uh, attack. Um, so what is uh, RFID mal malware? Um, first of all, it's a low-level misuse of um, improperly formatted RFID tag data. So what you do is that you look, you take a tag and you program something on it, which is outside of the specification of the, the, the software uh, uh, writer. Um, this, um, this improperly formatted RFID tag data can come in, in three different ways, uh, which are first RFID uh, exploits. So you take, um, say for instance, uh, you always take 64-bit tags, which contain 64 bits of data, and now you take a tag which contains 128 bits of data. So then you have 64 more bits of data, and you can choose whatever you put in there. You can put like a virus or a worm in there, and in case the, 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 uh, the database manufacturer, which is behind the, the RFID reader, um, did not properly format the, 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 the input data, um, you could make use uh, of this, uh, this exploit. Uh, the next one is um, a worm. So you could actually create a uh, program, a worm, in, in, in an RFID tag. And that's what they did at the Free University uh, from Amsterdam. And they actually demonstrated that it works with uh, some databases. And if we can create worms, we can also create viruses to, uh, to corrupt uh, uh, the database which is behind the, the RFID uh, reader. Um, so all these uh, things are uh, possible with these RFID tags. Um, and actually, you can wonder what the impact is. If you do a quick Google uh, trend history search on RFID, uh, on the, the, the keyword RFID, you will see that the, the, the number of news results uh, goes up by the time. And um, when RFID became really interesting in 2004, on the left, you see that uh, a lot of people searched for the, the, 